Hello viewers, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel Learn English with Hamid. Before we continue, please uh, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for more notifications. I'm sure you'll get uh, great lessons in the future as this one as we have had in the past. Yes, let's start with this video. Today's video is about cricket vocabulary. Yes, cricket vocabulary. Yes, I'm sure you like cricket. Do you like cricket? Yes, we like cricket. We all like cricket, don't we? So today I'm going to discuss cricket vocabulary with you and cricket vocabulary as used in everyday English. Yes, many cricket words, many cricket vocabulary are used in day-to-day -day conversation with to a, a little different meaning and we are going to look at the different meaning. So we know that cricket has a great impact on vocabulary or on the English language. So many of the words that we use in our daily English are taken from uh, the cricket, field of cricket. And cricket has also taken words from different fields. So what we'll do is we'll look at those words which we use in our day-to-day -day conversation but which are basically taken from the cricket, the field of cricket. And uh, these meanings, these words will have slightly different meanings. So yes. So what we'll do, we'll look at three types of vocabulary. We'll look at certain verbs that are used in day-to-day -day conversation, but basically they come from cricket. So the first is uh, verbs, the second is nouns, and the third is idioms. So let's start with verbs first. And you have these verbs in a table form. So I'm sure this table makes it easy for you to understand these verbs. So the first verb is to stump someone. Yes, to stump someone means it's a verb and it's usually used in passive form. And what is the day? Yes, you know stumps. A, a, a batsman is stumped, for example, means the batsman is dismissed. His e or her innings is over, for example. But what does it mean in day-to-day -day conversation? Well, in day-to-day -day conversation, stump means to ask somebody a question that is too difficult for them to answer. For example, you asked uh, maybe your teacher a question and the teacher doesn't know. So you say, oh, you stumped the teacher or the teacher was stumped by the question. Or maybe a journalist asks uh, a politician a question and the politician has no answer. So you say, yes, the politician was stumped by that question. Or could be students as well. We could say the students were stumped by questions in the exam. So stump means to ask somebody a question that is too difficult for them to answer. Moving on to bowl over. Yeah, bowl over. You know what bowl means in cricket? Yes, uh, bowl over is a phrasal verb and it's also it's usually used in the passive voice. So to be bowled over means to be greatly surprised by something or maybe impressed by something. So you could say, for example, we were bowled over by their performance. Like their performance was impressive, excellent, great. And we were impressed by that. We were bowled over by the performance. The third verb is to catch somebody out. Yes, to catch someone. Yes, to catch someone means that player is dismissed. His or her innings is over. And that's not... Uh, uh, very good news for the batsman. So it means the meaning, you g guess the meaning, yes. So to bowl someone means to surprise somebody and put them in a difficult situation. Yes, that's the meaning we have in day-to-day -day English. Example sentences, many investors were caught out by the fall in the share prices. Passive voice, catch, caught, caught. The other verb is to captain a ship. So captain, you know the captain, and captain is a noun, but it's a verb as well. So to captain a ship means to be in charge of that ship. Or you could also say, who is captaining that team? We say that in cricket. So here, this the other way around. Here, cricket has taken this word, this verb from day-to-day -day conversation. So to captain a ship means to be the captain of that team or that ship, for example. So an example sentence is, his father captained many ships or his father captained that particular ship in that war, for example. Moving on, to field someone. Yes, in cricket we have bowling, batting and fielding. So fielding is a noun, but field is a verb as well. 
So to field someone means if I'm the captain, so I put fielders on the field, so I'm fielding different fielders. So to field someone is used in politics, in elections, and it means to provide a candidate, a speaker, a team to represent someone you in election. So for example, if I am the captain of uh, uh, a political party, the chairman of a political party, and I select a particular player and that player, sorry, I select a particular candidate and that candidate contests selection on behalf of my party. So I'll say I fielded that particular candidate. So to field means somebody who represents you. So the example sentence is each of the main parties fielded more than 200 candidates. Clear, I'm sure. I hope. Yes, the next one, the last verb, very interesting, to LBW, yes, I'm sure you know, yes, I'm dead sure you know what LBW means, like before wicket, but in day-to-day -day conversation, we say to LBW something, yes, and what does that mean? Well, it means to stop the progress of something, to stop the progress of some activity. For example, you say uh, a road is being built, and um, the authorities have closed the road for a while, for example. So the example sentence would be, the road closure will LBW the flow of traffic. Like it will stop, it will impede, it will hinder the flow of traffic. Another sentence is, the new policy will LBW business from hiring businessmen or businesses from hiring new workers. So it will stop there, it will impact there. Uh, let's say performance, their activities. Yet another example is, the weather conditions are expected to LBW air travel. Yes, weather conditions will LBW air travel. And it's not gonna be very smooth, for example, for the next few days, let's say. So to LBW something means to stop the flow of something, to stop its progress. Moving on, we look at uh, certain nouns now that we have borrowed from the field of cricket, from the game of cricket. And these nouns are used in day-to-day -day conversation with a little different meaning. So the first noun is stumps. Yes, you know what stumps are. So stumps means the remaining part of something. An example sentence is, after the storm, only the stumps of the once majestic tree remained. So there was a great tree, the storm destroyed that, and now there is no tree, just the stumps left, like a few remaining parts from that tree. The next very common uh, noun is all-rounder. So we say he or she is an all-rounder. So an all-rounder is a person with uh, many talents. So an example sentence is, my neighbor is an all-rounder. He can cook, he can paint, can sing and juggle at the same time. What about you? Are you an all-rounder? If you are, tell me in the comment section. What different skills do you have? Share it with us. Share those skills with us. Moving on, hat-trick. Yes, very common when a bowler takes three wickets on three consecutive balls. So it's a great achievement and we call that a hat-trick. So a hat-trick may happen in real life as well when you achieve three uh, great things in a row, for example. So three successful achievements, one after the other. An example sentence is, she was on a roll having completed three major projects and uh, thus achieving a hat-trick. Yes, a hat-trick of success. Great metaphor. Yes, the next noun is wicked. And what does wicked mean in day-to-day -day conversation? Well, it means a barrier. And an example sentence is, he finally succeeded in opening the locked gate by finding the correct key after several attempts and breaking through the wicket. Like whatever barriers he faced, he overcame those barriers and got through the wicket. And now idioms, the last uh, part in the video. So now certain idioms used in day-to-day -day conversation which have basically come from the field of the game of cricket. So the first idiom is to be on a sticky wicket. What does to be on a sticky wicket means? Well, it means to be in a difficult situation, to be in trouble. An example sentence is he lost his job and now he is on a sticky wicket. 
just an example sentence <laughs> and the other sentence is uh, the other idiom is it's not cricket so it's not cricket means it's not fair something is not fair it's not cricket means it's not fair so for example you say my f my friend was hired all of a sudden with no warning with no notice and it's not cricket like it's not fair the third idiom that has come from the game of cricket is right off the bat right off the bat so right off the bat means quickly immediately without wasting time so for example a student got uh, questions in exam and he answered all the questions off the bat like without wasting any time quickly immediately and uh, <clears throat> two more idioms, similar idioms, to be on back foot or to be on front foot. So if you are on a back, uh, to, if you are on back foot, so it means you are at a disadvantage. If you are on front foot, you are at an advantage, for example. So <clears throat> an example sentence to be for, uh, to be on front foot is, is there, uh, sorry, uh, to be on back foot. His resignation has put the company on the back foot. Like the company is in trouble now because that particular guy, that particular employee resigned. And the last two idioms from the field of, from the game of cricket, to bowl someone a googly. Yes, googly is a type of uh, delivery in cricket. So to bowl someone uh, a googly means to throw, to throw someone, to ask someone a difficult question which they have no answer to or to put them in a difficult situation so you say for example the journalist bold the prime minister a googly or the journalist bold the politician a googly that his question surprised the politician and the politician had no answer and the last one somebody has had a good innings the word innings is a singular by the way there is s at the end but this noun is a singular so we say somebody has had a good innings somebody has had a good innings means somebody has had uh, a long life maybe healthy life and usually we said that when somebody dies and we say it after the death of that person but we don't say it after the death of any person it's said after the death of someone who has had a long life. So, for example, you say, uh, how old was she? Somebody died and then you say, how old was she? So you say, 82. You say, ah, okay. Well, she had a good innings then. She has had a good, in good innings then. So it means she had a great life, like a long life. And uh, I hope you have had you may have or you will have a good innings in life in English as well. And that's it what we have for today. Before we leave, please subscribe to my channel, like this video as well and come back for more great lessons. See you.